All good? Yeah. Okay. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the VGU TV GamerCast, the official gaming podcast of VGU.TV. I'm your host, Joshua Lowley, and I've got James Fangello. Hello. I've got Alan Muir. Hello. And I've got Nate Hull. Yo. Nate, long time. You haven't been on the show in a while. Yeah, I know, man. The PlayStation podcast has been hogging me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I... <laughs> Taking never, all your talent. They never asked me to be on that show because every time they do it, I'm always busy. But I, but I mean, I would, I, I would love to be on that show. Well, we never get to do GamerCast anymore because it's like we're so busy. Yeah, man. But uh, hopefully this summer, I intend to do more this summer because uh, I'll have a lot of time on my hands. Um. Anyway, we just watched the reveal of the new Xbox, so we're going to talk about that. So we're not going to do what are you playing. We're not going to look for questions or talk about the news or anything we're just going to talk about the new xbox reveal so i mean if if you're one of those people that wants to just go watch the press conference and not be spoiled although if you have twitter it's not like you can get away from it yeah. oh my god <laughs> my twitter <laughs> was was like exploding the entire time. uh so i was like trying to live blog pay attention and like tweet to people at the same time because i was getting a lot of responses but um yeah i mean so it's not called Xbox Infinity. Mm-hmm. It's called no. It's Xbox stupid. Than that. <laughs> Which I gotta say is like the worst. Like oh, it's it's like just as bad as the Wii U in my mind. <laughs> and and I was like watching the IGN stream, and when it was over, Peter Mall was like, oh, I kind of like it. I'm like, God damn it, Peter. <laughs> 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 no, like it's not a good name. Like even people on Twitter were like telling me, "Yeah, it's, it's an awful name." Um, it's like, and it's it's like ironic too because right when uh, Don Matrick was like, "The Xbox," he's like, "We're gonna take, we have to take a step in the future, you know, into the future." So we're calling it Xbox Pause One. <laughs> 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 It'd be funny if they actually just like rolled out the original Xbox. <laughs> We're bringing <laughs> I mean, it back. <laughs> this? Like Halo 2 is coming back online and going <laughs> back to the glory days. <laughs> <laughs> God, no. And I don't know what. Do you, how do you guys feel about the name? Because I wasn't too crazy about it. I hated the name. I, I, I mean, like here's the thing: the name is not going to dissuade me from buying a console. Well, yeah. For crying out loud, I got the Wii U, but um. Too. It's just, but really, like you couldn't come up with a better name than that, though. Xbox One. Like, here, here's the thing: the reason that the Xbox 360 was called the 360 and not the Xbox Two was because the PlayStation 3 was coming out. They couldn't call it the Xbox Two and have the PlayStation 3 be out because, well, you know, people are gonna, you know, because the average mom or dad going to the store are gonna go, well, this is three and that's two, so why don't we get this one? You know, and so they didn't want that, so that's why they call it the Xbox. You know- 60. Now we have the PlayStation 4, so they don't they don't get rid of the number. They still have four in the number. We're going back to we as in Microsoft. I'm like uh, talking as if Microsoft going back to one. <laughs> I know, isn't it funny? Yeah, it it's funny because they like broke their own logic. They're, now people are gonna go. Well, the PlayStation 4 must be like four times better. <laughs> <laughs> it was so dumb. It's like then why'd you call the 360 the 360? It should have been the Xbox 2. Yeah, oh. Yeah. How also would it have been called... Xbox, Xbox 2, Xbox 1? Remember when it was called Zenon? Zenon? No, I... or whatever. It was uh, X-E-N-O-N. That was the, was that, was the, okay. uh, that was the dev kit name for it. And I thought that oh, name was cool, but they didn't keep it. I would have preferred Durango to this, and Durango <laughs> is horrible. And I would have preferred that to this. Yeah. So the name wasn't it was doing it. Because there were like, so many cool names floating around, like Xbox Infinity, you know, and they were like, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, we're going to go with one. <laughs> yeah, and not like one, the number, O N E. And it's yeah. all one word. Like, I don't know what they're thinking. Well, is it one word? I thought, because I thought I, that. You know, I know I why they. I know why they called it one, because it's your one device that's supposed to connect yeah, everything. It makes and, sense. Like, yeah. But it's stupid. Like <laughs> it's just a dumb name. It it doesn't convey like what it should convey. And they spent way too much time talking about TV and sports ball, oh yeah. as Zach put it. <laughs> they spent way too much time talking about the TV thing. It's like they came out right off the bat and they're talking about yeah, it's like 
wouldn't it be great if all your devices were like linked up and it was just one box in your living room and there was no clutter? I'm like, yeah, that would be pretty great. And they show off the console right off the bat, which I thought was, they had such a strong opening because they're like, they're like, fuck you, Sony. Here it is, right? And I mean, <laughs> I love what it Sony. Looks like. <laughs> I love Sony and I'm not, I wasn't really irked that they didn't show the console because really, it's going to be a fucking black box. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> but people, you know, people get really bent out of shape about that. So when they came out and were like, there, there it is. There's the box. There's the controller. There's the connect. Like, they, they just were like, they could have dropped the mic and just left for like five yeah. minutes and then came it's back. It's a tangible thing. That That's what the PlayStation conference is. I mean, it, it's not like it was bad because this wasn't here. But it's a tangible consumer product. You're buying something. This is what you're buying. Yeah. With the PlayStation, we still don't know what we're buying yet. We saw the we don't controller, know what it looks like. It's not a big deal. We saw the controller, but you don't know what it looks like. And it, it's just a psychological thing. You want to know what the box looks like. It doesn't really matter. Who cares what the box look, looks like? Well, you do because you want to see it because you want to see what the stupid thing looks like. You know, I mean, it's just yeah. Why do people well, want to see cover art for they, games? They did just know? release that um, that teaser. There was a PlayStation Four teaser that went out yesterday, and they uh, there's a bunch of flashes that show parts of the system, and there's like I think twelve in total. And IGN posted them all. It's still really hard to tell like what that console looks like, but to me, it doesn't look um. From what I can see, it's kind of hard because some of them look like they're parts of the controller and other parts don't. Mm-hmm. So it's really hard to tell, like what I'm, you know, what you're looking at. And some of them look. It's sometimes you look at some of them, you can't tell if it's a trigger or if there's just like stuff coming out of the console. But you know, I I do like the way the new like the Xbox One looks. I gotta get used to saying that. I do like the <laughs> I, way. Oh God, I'm just gonna call it Xbox as soon as it yeah. comes out. I'm just going to call it Xbox, and then I'm going to call the other one 360. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm going to so, call it Xbox One. You're yeah, right. It's like I have to think about it really hard before I say <laughs> it. The Xbox One, I like the way it looks. Uh, it's It just kind of, you know, it's very sleek. It looks like a yeah, it looks pretty cool. black box. It says Xbox on it. It's got a power button, disk drive. It's like, we're done, you know. And, you know, one thing I... Um, yeah, they, they did hype up the TV too much, though. Like, I understand that that's like their whole thing is this is this is your the center of your living room, and honestly, like it's gonna do really well uh, in that sense. But they didn't clarify anything they were talking about. <laughs> like, they were making a lot of really vague references to their features without even like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Um, extrapolating? Yeah, there you go. They, they didn't extrapolate on anything they were talking about. So they were like, oh, yeah, you can watch live TV. And then, and then of course, you guys all know in the chat, I called this shit. I was like, it's going to be a DVR. It's going to be one box. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, I was like and it's going to run Comcast because Xbox 360 already has an Xfinity app, so if you're a Comcast member, you can watch on demand on your Xbox. So I was like, it's going to be Comcast. And of course, they were like, yeah, you can watch live TV. And then they, and then offhand, they're like, something, 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 Comcast. And they never (laughs) talked about it ever again. They didn't talk about, like, what if I have AT&T? What if I have DirecTV? What if I have Dish Network? Is this going to be like Nolan Void? Am I not going to be able to do the same (laughs) thing? Well, you know? he said the guy said he said uh, he said this is running through Comcast because that's the provider I have in my region. That's what he said. Yeah. Um. But I immediately was like, well, okay, fine. But does that mean because he didn't say it's a partnership with Comcast? He just said that's the provider in my region. I'm interested to know though because they never said it. What happens if you have a different provider? I mean, I have Verizon. You know, would I be able to use Verizon? Verizon has TV. Yeah, so uh, Fios, they don't Fios. out here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Verizon Files. Well, also the 360 yeah. has a Verizon Files like app, but I don't know if they're gonna. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, we don't. Verizon doesn't offer TV out here, so in oh, California. Well, we well, have, out in the well, we have, out in the boonies, maybe they don't, but here in <laughs> America, they do. <laughs> Like right next to San Francisco. Here in the red, white, and blue. <laughs> I live like I live like thirty minutes from one of the biggest cities in the U.S. You're You're telling me I live out in the boonies and shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, like we just don't have that. We have Directv. We have 
uh, Comcast, obviously, because that's what I have. I just don't watch it. And then we have uh, Dish Network, which we used to have, and a couple of my friends have. And then we have AT and T, and like all we have all those, and they all have their own services, and they all compete and shit. But I don't. I I, I knew like. Verizon FiOS or whatever existed, but I didn't actually know what it was. But it yeah. does it nobody has it out here. So. It's, t- it's a TV and phone and internet. Mm. So you know, it's the whole it's the whole thing. Well, but like, it is so it's it, like it, it moves to places. Yeah, but it like so, it, but it moves to places in weird patterns. You know, yeah. I'm in the DC area, so that's, um, you know, so it it came into the DC area relatively early on. Um, but you know, I loved when. He was showing off all the new gestures and shit. Like, you know, you're supposed to care about the new Connect or something. But, um, he, he, and then he was like, Xbox fantasy, because the only thing that popped into my mind was like, just a bunch of porn's gonna pop. (laughs) (laughs) You guys wanna hear something really funny? Hmm. I was, uh, I was Skyping with, uh, with my friend, uh, while the thing was going on. And (laughs) he has a Connect. So. Every time that that guy said Xbox, it registered on his Connect because he was watching through Xbox, and he had to keep Xbox cancel, Xbox cancel. <laughs> wow, they didn't think that through, did they? That is so funny. I'm like, oh, God, I'm glad I just switched on Spike TV. <laughs> He's like, Xbox fantasy, and his Connect's like, I don't know what to do. His Xbox just blows up. <laughs> I can just imagine a screen popping up literally every time that guy said Xbox. <laughs> Like, oh, Xbox cancel. Damn it. <laughs> Stop saying Xbox. That's why I just watched it through IGN. <laughs> but uh also, like, no games. Mm. Well, they I mean, to be fair, they showed games. But they did say before this conference that E3 is when they're showing the games. And this was really to explain the architecture and the their vision for entertainment and blah, 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 blah. Knowing Microsoft, they'll do that again anyway. <laughs> But they had, as they said, they are like, what, 15 exclusives? Indie? I'm not expecting 15 Halos, but there are 15 <laughs> exclusive titles that they talked, that they mentioned, they teased, that they're going to be doing. They have that one with Quantum Break from Remedy. I've never that heard of that be before. Cool, actually. Um, I have no idea what it's about. Um, Probably about some coming cataclysm and the little girl who's like an orphan or some shit. I don't know. She's probably got like psychic powers and she can see in the future because she asks why are you so special she touches her head and you just see like all this shit dying and people like touch her shot (laughs) and they said something about like the future the future like is a flame or something like that which i think that's what it's supposed to be you know what it gave me kind of a beyond two souls vibe i'm like what are they trying Mm -hmm. to do here i also thought it was really weird that like it's because when they were showing it i'm like is this another goddamn tv show and then they showed like 3D and all that, and I, yeah, I was like, like transition from live action into like yeah. So I was like, is this yeah. supposed to be live action and like 3D? Like yes, like, I don't know. That that did that was a little confusing because you're like, what? What? How funny would it be if like the like the cut scenes were all live action, but like they kept like flipping back to like her like looking into the future, and the future was a video game. You know what I like, wish? Well, the future doesn't quite come through in as good quality. wish they just showed Alan Wake 2. Like they sh- <laughs> are, they, are they even making Alan Wake 2? They've been talking about it. But, but you know, you've been... But, but however, however, to be fair, Josh, and not just you, but people in general have been bitching about Microsoft not having new IP. And then they show a new IP, and you go, why didn't they make a sequel? <laughs> so, well, I did, I did you know, say... Fair here. I did say in the chat, thank God, at least something new, but I still <laughs> would have rather had Alan Wake 2. I, I just want, I would rather have something new from somebody else, but I want them to make Alan Wake 2. Mm. Like, you know. But, uh, uh, yeah. They, they closed up the conference very well, though, because you saw a lot from COD Ghosts. I thought they were just going to show you the behind the scenes, and then I thought they were just going to show you the comparison. But then they actually showed you, like, a gameplay trailer, and that was pretty cool. That was the most abrupt ending to a press conference. Oh, my God. Seen well, the, I, the abruptness, yes. I um, thought that's what you were talking the about. They, showed, like, they closed no. it out good. I'm like, they didn't close it out at all. No, 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 no not, not, the, not the, the abrupt just, <laughs> and it's over. No, not that. The, uh, the the fact that the last thing they showed was the gameplay trailer for Call of Duty, which yeah, that was actually pretty cool. It was you know cool. what? That actually does look pretty good. I mean, I I 
I'm pretty vocal about voting with my wallet and not buying Call of Duty just because I feel like it's the same goddamn game every year I buy it. <laughs> but, or every year it, it comes out. Uh, but I mean, this one actually looks different. Like, it looks like something new. And of course, they got the guy who wrote Traffic yeah. to write it. And I was like, this looks really dark and, like, different. And they were talking about how they want it to be, like, emotionally driven. I'm like, if they actually make this game not the the hoorah like military shooter that it's been for years and years then i'm on board you know well yeah i i definitely like the idea of a very good well-told story but i still want it to be hoorah you know with the guns blazing because that is call of duty you know that's like trying to have gears of war without it being like a bro game you know it has to be a bro game you could still like look judgment judgment did a good job with the story they they had good storytelling a lot at least these good storytelling parts of gears but yet it's still kind of like you know you're chainsawing people into pieces you know it's so i think that it, needs, it still needs to have call of duty still needs to be call of duty if, it, if call of duty turns into band of brothers i'll be kind of pissed no I'm because not. it's not call of duty <laughs> but band of brothers is awesome but that's not what call of duty is though i feel like battlefield's trying too hard to be like the only reason I bring Battlefield up, I know this has nothing to do with Xbox One, but but like before the Xbox stream, they showed an ad for it, mm. and they got that freaking Rihanna song playing and shit, and I'm like, this is trying way too hard to be like Call of Duty. It should just make it, it's, <laughs> it should just be Battlefield, you know, it should find its own voice. I think that's the problem with all these EA shooters, they don't have their own voice, but uh... No, oh, I, I, I'm really tired of like, hoorah shooters. Because if you play the original Call of Duties, they weren't like, you know, they didn't have the same feeling that all the new ones had. It felt very like, grounded in reality. Well, because and, they were World uh, War II games. I know, but still, I mean, you just don't, dude. They could make a freaking ridiculous World War II game if they wanted. Well, yeah, they I could, but I mean, we kind of, we kind of went past that fad. You know, we had everything was World War Two for years, and oh, then we two. stopped. I want and then Modern Warfare sure. is really what changed it. I want somebody to make another World War Two shooter. <laughs> Although I want them to tell the story from all sides, but they won't ever do that ever. Well, like what? Like you'd be a Nazi at some point. <laughs> I think it'd be interesting. I'm not saying like make a hoorah World War Two shooter. I would want it to be like a serious, like war is hell kind of thing because... Do you want, like, All Quiet on the Western Front, but World War II and a video game? Yeah, why not? Like, But I... I not enough people get all the perspectives of a war. You know what I mean? Kind of. I, I, think, I think I get what you're saying. Yeah, and I want a game that shows you all the perspectives because not every single Nazi was a freaking asshole. You know, they... Like, some of them had families. And, I mean, yeah, there were the... There, most of them were pretty bad. But I'm just saying, you know, there's two sides to everything. And uh, the, none of the war games ever really show you that. They never let you play as, like, the enemies. Like, Killzone, for example, one of the one of the most requested things ever for that entire franchise is, like, let us play as the Hellgast. Because <laughs> at some point when you play that game and learn the backstory, you start to feel kind of bad for them, and you become, like, a sympathizer. And you're like, I just want to freaking play as them. I don't want to play as these other people. I just think that there's there's times when you want to see that and there's times when you don't because I th I think certain stories kind of lend themselves to um you know it's just good versus evil you know like you like have, like and I know World War Two is history it's not uh, fiction but let's let, I'm just gonna talk about fiction um like look at like Star Wars right you don't really sympathize with the Sith all that much. Like, you may possibly have a little bit you with never Vader, had a chance to sympathize but, with the Sith, James. <laughs> but you don't sympathize with the Sith, because they're just, they're just, they're evil incarnate, you know? They're, just, they're the dark side of the Force. They're yeah. the bad guys. Yeah. You know, but some stories, you do kind of want to see both sides, because if you look at, like, World War II, as you said, not all the Nazis, I mean, not all of the people that were fighting were Nazis, because the Nazis were a party in Germany. The German army, they weren't all Nazis. And the ones that were, they were fighting this war. They weren't the ones, you know, they, they were fighting just like I brought up the movie reference, All Quiet on the Western Front, but it's just true. It's all about this kind of like they brainwash the young kids into thinking they have to fight for their country. They go out there and then they realize, what are we really fighting for? Why am I fighting this guy? I don't want to kill this guy. He doesn't want to kill me. Why are we doing this? 
And so I think some stories lend themselves to that and some don't. So I, I think it, it kind of, it depends, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, let's, we should go back to Xbox One though. Also, the dog is random Ugh, and I bet you 50 Xbox bucks that dog's gonna get shot. <laughs> I think no. I think where it's going is the dog is go- you're gonna think the dog dies, but then it's gonna like come back. It's gonna have its like glory. It's like oh my god, it's not dead moment. You're about to That's get shot I in the think. head, and the dog's like, <laughs> rawr, 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 just like rawr, and that like rips a guy's throat out. Takes or a chunk out of some guy, and you're like, thanks, Balto, <laughs> and you just go. Like, <laughs> 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 and you're like. You're like, oh, I thought you were dead, and the dog replies, it's like, I was, you know, and it's, <laughs> it starts to on off. It's like, <laughs> it's like a cliffhanger ending, it's like, Call of Duty Ghosts, and you're like, I get it now! <laughs> We've been dead the whole time, I don't know, like, <laughs> wouldn't that be yeah. funny? Like, wouldn't that just be a huge middle finger to the audience? <laughs> you've, been, you've been like killing all these people. Little do you know that like it didn't even matter because by the end you just figure out you've been dead this whole time. Like you died in the war early on, but you're in like you're in like Valhalla or something, or something, and 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 all you can do is just keep fighting for glory. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so awful. They were like Christianity was wrong. The Norse gods had it right all all along. You just go to Valhalla. <laughs> It's like, and then all of a sudden there's like ice trolls, and you're like, "What is happening?" <laughs> Turns into a fantasy game. It's like, it's like that whole Assassin's Creed twist where like everybody booted that game up. We're like, "What the fuck? It's a sci-fi game." You know, I love that. By the way, oh my I, God, I, I'm sorry. I'm reading, I'm reading the, the VG Utopia chat here, or the VG Utah TV, whatever. Uh, the chat, and Chris Irv is <laughs> just not very happy. <laughs> that reveal was lame. That, I won't even repeat what he said, but you should you should read it. I, I read it. You should read it. <laughs> I'm saying you guys should read it. I don't want to. It's funny it though. Podcast. It's funny. But, oh, yeah. I can I can paraphrase it. He says MS better be handing out BJ's at E3 regardless because that reveal was lame. <laughs> <laughs> not happy camper. No, he's not. <laughs> I, I even put on Twitter, I was like, that PS4 is looking better and better. Because, <laughs> like, I, I mean, you know what's funny? Also, they didn't talk about, like, t- back to the I, the thing where we were talking about, uh, let's get off the uh, topic of ice trolls in World War II, but they didn't, they didn't uh, talk about anything that they were bringing up. Like, sure, they, they were like, oh, yeah, it's got TV Guide, even though there's never anything on ever. And then... Uh, I bet you, like, people are going to be like, Xbox, TV Guide, and the TV Guide's going to come and be like, wow, there's nothing on. And then they're going to be like, well, what's the point of this? Because that happens every time I turn the TV on. I'm like, what the hell? Nothing well, to watch. You're not a t- well, you're not a TV guy, so that's... I'm not a TV guy. I, I like TV shows, but I watch them on DVD or it's Hulu. Like you guys and- were all complaining about the EA Sports. Like, it's sports, it's boring. <laughs> I like sports. Like, well, I understand why they brought cool, it up. This was a cool featurette. I liked it. You guys are all like, come on, let's get to something else. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta sneeze. <laughs> That's oh, exactly God. how I heard the comments that you were like typing. I heard you guys all, come on. No. <laughs> this is stupid. Like, you know what, I, when I think about it, they literally did only pander to their main audience. And, their main, and the main Xbox audience is Call of Duty and Madden people. That's true. So, and there's a lot of those and people, people who watch it on TV. <laughs> uh, I, go ahead. The fantasy sports thing. I, I did say. I, I I understand that, um, especially like with like say football, right? Fo- football, American football, is not very popular elsewhere in the world. It's not hugely popular. Soccer is really, you know, the these work everywhere else. But here in America. We have a gigantic football following and a gigantic fantasy football following. The fact that you can track your fantasy players while you watch the games on live TV is insane. I bet People that would be like an American People are going to go nuts with that, especially here in, in America. Yeah. They're going to <laughs> love that. You know what? They, you know what's funny is like, it, these are all one, all these devices integrated into one, right? Uh, they don't like really solve the problem of what if I want to play a game but my dad's too busy watching this 
fucking football game and I'm not going to be able to get them <laughs> off the goddamn thing. At least with the Wii U, it's like I can boot that shit up and play like on the controller and leave. But you're going to have all these people, like you're going to have your whole family. If let's, let's say one, like a whole family buys that one box, you're going to have the whole family like trying to have their time with the box. Which, I mean, it's like first world problems, you know, but I, I don't know. Um, the one another thing they brought up, they brought up cloud. They brought up the cloud, which is like something they're going to have to go toward that anyway. Because PC, like in Steam, you know, like, ha- like tons of, sh- of your stuff on Steam is already hosted on the cloud. Like your game saves and everything. Um, PlayStation, they've got PlayStation Cloud. Uh, you're going to be able to stream your games, host more stuff on the cloud. PlayStation Plus people already have cloud saves, which I freaking love. It saved my life sometimes. Um, <laughs> and the problem I had with their, their reveal is they didn't talk about it at all. They were just like, oh, it's cloud saves. But then they said something about like all your content being available on the cloud and the games being available on the cloud. And when I heard that, I was like, does that mean you're going to be able to stream games on this Xbox? And then they didn't talk about it. Like, at all. So I'm like, does that just mean I get to host the game files on the cloud? Which is like, why would I need to do that anyway if they're just on Xbox Live? And then, you know, they didn't elaborate on it at all. Elaborate was the word I was looking for earlier. Mm -hmm. They didn't elaborate on anything. They are just like, yep, it's going to be like this. And then they didn't even really give you any context for when... um, they went back to the TV thing where they were talking about their Xbox, like, exclusive entertainment, you know? Like, they're going to have exclusive TV shows that are just on Xbox Live. They didn't even give you any context for that because, you know, we all follow the industry, so we know it pretty in and out. We know what's going on. And when somebody gets hired to do something or, you know, somebody, uh, or they kind of quietly announce something, we pretty much know about it and we remember and that lady got hired, like, let's say, like, a year and a half ago, two years ago, to produce, uh, like, unique TV shows and stuff for Xbox TV. Nobody ever really talked about it ever again, but I remembered, and they didn't give any context for that. She just came out on stage and started talking like everybody knew what the fuck was up. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, they were supposed to know that. Uh, what they were talking about. They were just like, yeah, TV is great on Xbox, and we've got all these shows. And it's like, they didn't talk about like the fact that they would even have unique programming that's just on Xbox. They didn't say anything like that. And you know it's going to be like that. The big surprise, though, is that they Steven Spielberg working on live-action Halo series. Yeah, uh, I didn't expect yeah, that. Yeah, actually, I was, I was surprised. But yeah. I, would have rather had a you know Halo game, but <laughs> it's fine. I mean, but we all kind of knew Halo Five because like they're on what a two two year cycle, right? Two year cycle or three year yeah, cycle, something like but that. But like we we all know Halo Five wasn't coming out this year. It came Halo Four came out last year, so we all know it's not coming out until at least the end of twenty fourteen. Yeah, but they could at least tease it. And then there's a okay. lot of um, people are still clamoring for halo 2 anniversary which i think they would be stupid not to do at some point and next year is the halo 2 and 10 year anniversary so people are like uh kind of expecting it so i think a lot of people were really hyped that maybe they would at least tease it here but instead we got a tv show which might be good i mean forward unto dawn was pretty cool other than the kind of uh low budget effects it, it had like a sci-fi channel kind of vibe to it you know what i mean mm. but it was still really good um if they just do that i think i think it'd be okay but the I, problem I think is the halo series will be cool but it, yeah. it's it's outside of the realm of gaming they said premium yeah so i was gonna gotta think you're yeah, gonna be paying for each episode that's, that's, that's my, my guess they said or with the gold subscription you get that would be cool you get gold subscription but as you i was watching this entire show. As I was watching this entire presentation, I just, like, there's this constant nagging in the back of my mind, like, saying to myself, like, this I'm probably going to pay, you know, extra for. This I'm probably, like, you know, that, that built-in yeah. Skype and all the premium, you know, TV stuff. You know, like, on, like, they, it's cool that they're showing all this stuff off, but, like, they, I just, like, the fact that I know that I'm going to be paying, like, extra for it just 
I don't know. Yeah. And a random thing, they were like, oh, yeah, when you're watching movies, you can Skype people. And it was kind of like, can I do that when I'm playing games? They didn't really talk about that yeah. either. And uh, they talk- and then they brought up the fact, like, um, oh, I don't remember what the service was called. They only said the name once. It was like Snap something. And, they- and it lets yeah, you snap run multiple. Feature, yeah. Snap, yeah. It was like they let you run multiple apps at the same time. But it's kind of like, why do I need to do that? I mean, if I'm looking, if I'm watching a friggin' movie and I was like, I gotta know where this guy's from, and I some for some reason need to like IMDb this guy's name, I don't know. Why can't I just pull up my phone? You know. <laughs> so I don't know. It it just it, it feels like it's not a gaming machine. It's a machine that does cool stuff, and it just happens to play video games. Like that's what it feels like to me. Yeah, which is a weird contrast to you know, the PS4, which like they were touting the fact that they were like really focusing on the gaming, and then they had the Xbox, which is like, yeah, we have games, but look, TV. Yeah, they talked about TV like half the time. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Like they they talked about TV, then they went to games, and they went back to TV. And they only and the only other game they went back to was was uh, Call of Duty. Yeah. And it's yeah, funny that's... how they were like, like. Uh, <clears throat> Fuck, I can't remember the guy's name. The freaking guy with the hair. He looks like a beetle. The guy with the hair. The guy I who think was they hosting all had it. Hair. Don Matrix. Yeah, the first they all guy had hair. I, I mean, <laughs> the guy with the hair. Well, they all had hair. The first guy to come out, Don Matrick. That Don guy. Matrick, yeah. um, he was the one who talked to Roger Goodell, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. By the way, that was so funny. I thought we were about yeah. to see some like homoeroticism. On that <laughs> I wanted to see Roger Goodell like throw a pass to Don Matrick or something. <laughs> That's what I wanted to see. Don pushes down. He's like, "NFL's in the Xbox. Xbox about to be in you." Starts pulling his shirt off. He's like, "No, Don, not like this." <laughs> Go deep. Oh, oh, oh my god! They just start playing "Go Deep, Go Hard" from Call of Duty Four. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that'd be so funny. Uh, yeah, it was like because it was playing this like music, like uh, oh, I can't even. It, it, it was like el- it was an elevator music, but it was like supposed to be touchy feely kind of nostalgia music, like something you hear in a Red Cross commercial or something. <laughs> like, oh, we rebuild communities, but it was just these two dudes talking about how you're gonna be able to watch NFL on your Xbox. And and uh, yeah, I and I also laugh because at one point they show this guy like he's supposed to be working or something, but like the computer he's typing on, it's just a video. <laughs> it's just like a video of somebody running like a touchdown pass or some shit. I'm like, this guy's just typing in a video. <laughs> like, what is he doing? <laughs> it's like he's he's at work and he's pretending to work, but he's really just watching the video. Yeah, he's like, I gotta know what's going on. He's got like four monitors, and he's not even <laughs> typing on the one that looked like he could have been typing on. <laughs> like, come on, bro. It, it just looked fake. I was like, all right. But um, man, what else did they talk about? <laughs> oh, uh, what did they talk about other than <laughs> like running out already? Well, there was only <laughs> well. Th- there was only an, it was only an hour, so it wasn't very long. Um, you know, I think what the PlayStation was like two hours, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, because yeah, PlayStation revealed, was like two hours. Revealed at least, I think they revealed like four games and talked about features and. Actually, yeah, and this is kind of like they they just actually revealed the broke features. Down, the they actually broke later. down like what their hardware meant. They weren't just like, oh yeah, it's got all these specs. And then they were, oh, they threw the specs at you so fast. I mean, it's not like it would have like, mattered for me because I have no idea what it means. You know, they could throw out there, it's got a 32 gigawatt of, like, you know, they could say 1.21 gigawatts and I would get it. And that, and that would be as much, I would understand it as much. I really don't know what the specs mean. Um, oh, but, really like- but yeah, they did throw them up there really fast. Sony definitely took their time to explain, look at what we have. We have this and that means this, but Sony, uh, Microsoft just went, Bruh! and then ran. <laughs> they like threw up all the specs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like if, if Microsoft had come out and talked about like the x86 processor, which is what both systems are going to be using because it's like a PC architecture, and like Microsoft had just been like, yeah, run it x86. Like, every, like, most, like 98% of, or 99% of people would have been like, I don't know what that means, but it sounds fancy. Like, <laughs> Sony was actually like, yeah, we're running on this x86 processor, and then, like, actually broke it all down. 
kind of like what it meant. Hang on, I'm being called. Keep talking. I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, how about Alan? What, uh, Alan, I haven't heard you talk much. Why don't you talk about what you thought of the press conference uh, as thought, a whole? I didn't like it. You didn't like it? Why didn't you like it? Because it, it just didn't... It felt like they were... It felt like a lot of pandering. Like they were pandering okay, to the Call of Duty crowd, pandering to the Madden crowd. No offense, James. Uh-huh, that's fine. Okay, I'm back. I think my girlfriend's mom, like, pocket-dialed me. Her phone, like, pocket dialed me. Because I just hear, like, a bunch of rustling and talking in the background. Like, oh, oh, I hate getting butt-dialed. Yeah. I hate butt-dialing, and I hate getting butt-dialed. It's awful. Well, go ahead, go ahead, Alan. You said there was a lot of, like... You thought there was a lot of pandering, and you didn't like... What, what would you have preferred? Honestly... I would have preferred if they just if they did things like they did on the in with the uh, Sony conference Sony reveal, mm-hmm. where they came out and actually talked about the games. Like Josh said, they talked about things but didn't really elaborate. They talked about 15 new games coming out in the first year of the system. Eight of them will be new type new IPs. Seven will be regular one, or previous ones. Which I'm, uh, did the Xbox? And one will be a TV show. Yeah. One will be a TV show. Did do the Xbox, like the original Xbox and 360, even have seven exclusives? Yeah. Oh, I know yeah. they have Halo, yeah. Fable. Um, uh, well, here's the thing: like the original Xbox had a, had quite a few actually, and um, like none of them are really remembered. I mean, Fable is obviously because Fable's yeah. like a big name. I think ex- you kind of forget. Oh, sorry. It's ahead, ca- the Fable franchise has kind of dipped in the recent years. Like, I freaking loved Fable 1. I loved Fable 2, but after that, it kind of went weird. And then they did Fable the Journey, and I'm like, come on now, just make a new Fable. Well, I think what you forget about exclusives for Microsoft is that uh, as much as this kind of sucks, all those Kinect games are exclusives. So those count. They're all yeah. exclusives. Mm. So if they say we have 20 I mean, exclusives... Not- Fifteen of them are Connect titles. Well, they do have twenty exclusives. Yeah, but I mean, the problem is, is core ga- they want core gamer exclusives. That's what people say. Exclusives. They want core gamer exclusives. Well, that's what they. That's what people mean by that when they say it. But if you, if Microsoft gets up there and says we have however many exclusives, it's true. But it, it's a, it's a, even it's a by, fact. But yeah, even they don't have that logic. So you know, even by that like definition, Sony still has more exclusives because they have all these like really useless move games that came out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although are there as many useless move games as there are useless Connect games? Because I feel like because Connect, uh, uh, there's probably an, e- whole there's thing probably an equal amount. Like uh, we're talking about Connect only games. Um, well, I guess anything that has the Connect, and anything with the purple. Well, well, by then, by that definition, there are a lot of PlayStation games that have move in it. Like they're not part of the. Uh, like they're not a core part of the gameplay, but they're like if you want to use it, it's there. Oh, yeah, I guess that's but, true. Uh, like that's Bioshock cool. Infinite has PlayStation Move in it. I don't know what the hell you do, but <laughs> it's there, you know. I know the Mass Effect Three had. Um, connect- yeah, Mass Effect Three had. Mass Effect Three had voice commands. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Well, I think if the voice commands are nice and fluid, that could actually help you. Um, with the uh, not having to pause combat with the wheel. I mean, sometimes you'd want to pause combat in Mass Effect so that you can kind of take stock of the situation. But sometimes if you want to, say, have Liara put a singularity out or something, you just say Liara singularity. That is easier. So I can kind of understand. Although it, it, it's similar, like, in Halo Anniversary. I remember I had I borrowed my friend's Kinect, uh, and I played Anniversary, and, like, there were some things that I thought were cool, especially when you flip back and forth between the graphics. It was cool to just say, you know, like, old or new or whatever and have it flip back instead of having to press the back button on the controller. Um, but when it came to like, grenades, I wanted to press left trigger. I didn't want to say, you know, grenade because there's a delay and stuff, and it's just way, way faster and better tactically to just press the trigger. So I think it, I think it works for some things and it doesn't for other. Yeah. They also, oh, they busted out the share button, basically. But they didn't elaborate on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, well, yeah. It's funny because I was like, there were a couple things that I kind of, I kind of missed there, but did they, that Xbox button at the top, was that a button or is it just the Xbox? Oh, that's, the, I think that, logo. that is the Xbox button. I guess mm-hmm. the guide button. But, so uh, that is the guide button. The, but, uh, you know, they, I think the other, there was another button on there. Like, they didn't, see, they didn't even show you where the button was. There's like two other buttons. That don't look like start and select buttons. 
I love, well, they like, showed you the console instead of showing you the controller until you knew what everything the controller did. So yeah, I, know. I guess there's the the positive of PlayStation is you you know everything the controller does. Negative is you don't see the console. Yeah. That yeah, console- but you already know what the console does, so it's like who the fuck cares? It's got a power button on it, and it's a black That's box. What it looks like. Everyone <laughs> wants to see what it looks like. Who cares if it makes sense? You want to see what it looks like. The thing yeah, well, kinda... you got in 19 days. You'll see what it looks like. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, they were like, yeah, here's the share. Here's uh, we have a share thing. It lets you record uh, your gameplay and all that. And then they were like, well, on to the next thing. Where Sony actually talked about it and then demonstrated it. Like they had the Killzone gameplay demo. And then right after they put that whole clip on their Facebook, they used the share button. And they even came out and were like, yeah, you saw the share thing happen. It's on our Facebook right now. And it was the, it was the direct footage. Like, that's, that, they showed the freaking hardware, like, like working. And I mean, Microsoft kind of did that, but you know, the only time they did was when they were like showing the new connect gestures. That's it. Yes, I, was, I, I thought it was interesting how like, that was the only time they ever like demonstrated anything. It was like, yeah. oh hey, look at this. You can Sony like, even showed a movie. Yeah, Sony even showed like remote play on the Vita. Like they even proved they're like, yeah, you're gonna be able to play your PS4 games like some of them on your Vita, like on the go, you know, like or through like Wi-Fi and all that. And I'm like, see, like that's something people want. You know, yeah. people don't want to yell at their Xbox like half the time. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you do, James, but I, I don't want to yell at my PlayStation. I would like, I just like, a, I would like a functionality where I could yell at it because sometimes I need a good yell, and that's a good excuse. <laughs> Mom, I'm playing video games. That's why I'm yelling. <laughs> Damn it, Xbox! <laughs> Xbox! <laughs> my best friend just tweeted at me saying PS quadruple. <laughs> PS quadruple. Uh, I'm getting a lot of freaking like tweets. Maybe it's just oh, no, one, no one on Twitter gives a crap. Um, you know, no no one that knows. I haven't seen anything crap, actually. positive yet on Twitter. Although I'm sure if I click the Xbox One thing, somebody will say something. Oh, well, I'm sure there's people who are like it. I mean, because yeah, I saw a couple reactions on Facebook. They're like, "Oh, this looks really cool," and I do think it looks really cool. I think if, if you kind of ha- you kind of have to step back from where we're looking at it, where it's just oh, we are oh, locked yeah. in the eternal competition of PlayStation. Game and stop. we're locked in this whole thing. But if you really just look at a person who is not super, super into the industry and they're really just looking at it as like a gaming device or whatever, or, hey, look what it can do. That is cool. It looks cool. It does I look have, cool. Uh, I have some uh, interesting and controversial news that was just confirmed by uh, Microsoft to GameSpot.com. Uh, Xbox One has a pre-owned fee for when you buy uh, pre-owned games. Oh, uh, come on. Oh, Douchebag. Yeah, so basically when you buy a game, it's going to tether itself to your Xbox Live account. It's got a built-in serial number, and it's going to say, like, you want to register this game? And you say, yeah. And then... You say, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. yeah register, register it so I can't yeah. resell it. You know? Which means the resale value for Xbox One games is going to be extremely low. That is ball sack. I don't know. I mean, I, it doesn't really matter... To me, all that much. Actually, hang on. You guys have to talk for a few minutes. I gotta let my brother in. Okay. Well, I think it's dumb. I think it's like really anti-consumer. So just so I was talking, I was seeing Scott t- talking in the chat earlier. So apparently, when you so if I get this straight, like you'll buy a new game and you'll register it to your Xbox, and then you'll be able to play that game without the disc. But then that particular disc just won't. Like, unless, like, unless you want to pay, it won't work on any other Xbox. I guess. I don't know. I, I, I guess that's the gist of what I, I think is going on. I don't know if he, like, all those details were confirmed. Yeah, I know, yeah that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm asking. Oh I wish God, sure. all the comments on this GameSpot article are freaking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so this guy says, what a piece of shit console the Xbox One is. LOL. This other guy says, wow, that's a deal breaker if I've ever seen one. Uh... This other guy says nail in the coffin for sure. Now my question is, will the PS4 do this? I think now we know why EA got rid of online passes. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. At first I was like, we won, but now I'm like, we didn't really win. 
No, nope. <laughs> they just partnered with Microsoft so they could do it. Too. <laughs> we don't need all my taxes anymore. Yeah. <laughs> they gave us all this bullshit about how, like, oh yeah, you know, we're doing it because like they were they weren't popular. We want to like you this know guy, be nice to gamers. Nope. <laughs> this guy says, I think I'm going to become a fanboy of this gen. Yay, PS4. <laughs> <laughs> and this other guy says, Sony wins. End of story. <laughs> the other guy says gets popcorn, which I kind of this agree. Is, this needs to be a um, w- 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 uh, this this needs to be a podcast, you dude. This is so like, <laughs> there's so much negativity, like. <sighs> oh my god, man! Like I. Apparently, yeah. the Xbox One will not know what's on your DVR. It will simply be UI over your cable's UI. Yeah, well, the thing is, their Xbox, they talked about this, actually. The operating system for the Xbox One, um, they were like, it runs three operating systems. And I'm like, one of those things isn't an operating system. Like, uh, <laughs> well, they were talking about, like, your content is running, like, underneath everything. So think of it like a, a like a, a, to- a three top tower or whatever or something. Well, they said, like, your content runs like at the bottom of everything, so it's like what you see. And then the Xbox overlay is like what runs on top of that. So, uh, and it runs a Windows 8 kernel, which means that it won't run Windows 8 stuff, but it's based on win- the Windows 8 architecture. Uh, and then I don't, I just can't even remember what the third one is. It's probably something stupid, but like, Basically, so the DVR functionality, which I don't believe them when they say that, oh, we can't tell what's on your DVR. Bullshit, you can't tell what's on my DVR. Like, they can tell now, you know? I have a feeling that um, they will let you record all the gameplay you want, but uh, they definitely will not let you record uh, movies you rent, uh, TV shows, possibly, like certain TV shows, uh you know, mark my words. They'll be they'll they have some loophole where they'll be able to go into your console if need be and take out content that they feel might violate a copyright because they don't want to get sued. Mm-hmm. Like there's they're there's definitely they're they're definitely going to do something like that. Like that's just my bet because if it's integrated, you know that you you can't trust it 100%. Like that's why a lot of people buy like like hotbook boxes, like you know, capture boxes and stuff, because they can capture just to their PC. It's like their own kind of third party thing and they can record whatever they want. And it's not like if, if you record like an NFL game or something, which you can't do without the express written consent of the NFL. Uh implied oral consent won't do it. Yeah. Implied <laughs> oral consent apparently won't do it. You have to get the express written consent. Express consent. Written con- consent. Um, yeah, they they really gonna fuck. I, I like lost my train of thought. She fucked me up. <laughs> oh, so yeah, you can't legally apparently record NFL games. Everybody does it anyway. Doesn't matter. Well, yeah, no one gives a shit. But yeah, if they found it out, then yeah, yeah they, they technically could. But I mean, I bet record. you that you won't be able to record like NFL games or you know NBA or whatever on your DVR. You won't be able to record any movies you rent because Xbox Video is a service they have which you can rent videos from. Sony's got one of those too. You can rent videos on on the PlayStation Store. I I guarantee you, like 100%, you won't be able to record any of that. You'll only be able to record uh, your gameplay, and it'll probably be like Sony, where you can only record like 15 minutes at a time. Mm. So, I yeah, I it's an extremely limited thing, and I I, I don't think anyone is really like I'm. Half these comments are just ha 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 ha. Like, that's all I see. Well, I mean, you are also reading comments that I'm sure are just from a lot of Sony fanboys. No, there's a lot of people saying, like, I'm not buying this anymore. Like, it's a deal breaker and stuff. It's pretty, like, did you just put another cause of right tweet in there? (laughs) Oh, (laughs) That's funny. It, it's it's a chart, and it's like you know the PlayStation Four is better than the Xbox One. This chart proves it, and it's just like a <laughs> chart, and it's like one. a bar graph, and there's <laughs> one bar that's up to four, and one that's up to one, and it's like PlayStation Four, Xbox One, console number. <laughs> it's like clearly four times better. <laughs> 
Dude, uh, this guy says Xbox done. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that people are gonna are gonna bitch about these little tiny things, and then the console is gonna be released. It's gonna sell hundreds this of guy- thousands of units, and it's gonna be Xbox and PlayStation jousting back and forth. Nintendo is gonna be lost in the background, and we all know that's gonna happen. You're gonna have plenty of people buying an Xbox, plenty of people buying a PlayStation. The Xbox isn't, you know, done. It's like, oh my God, Microsoft's done. No one's gonna buy it. And no one's gonna be like, I think they're core gamers. No are one's about gonna to buy leave. it. You know, it, it's not. It's not gonna be like the that. The problem is, uh, they're not gonna see any fallout really from this. But here's the thing, uh, they have to remember that Gamespot.com is all core gamers, and everyone on here is super negative. So they may have just lost a huge uh, portion of their audience. And yeah, while they still that, have a large, know they're going for the casual gamer. We all know that they're going for that huge market of of like a thirty something, forty something year old, maybe like thirty something, forty something year old parents of small kids who want to get a connect. We all know that's what they're going for, or they're going for the guys who want to play Call of Duty or Madden on the best, uh, you know, online service available, which is Xbox Live, which now has what three hundred thousand servers or something. It's going to be better. Xbox Live will be better. Oh, man. And you're gonna still gonna want to, and still it's gonna be the primo version of COD and the primo version of Madden in terms of multiplayer online experience is gonna be on the Xbox. They're still gonna buy it. Yeah, well, the people that just don't, the, the people that don't play games a lot and just watch TV, they're gonna think it's cool and they're gonna play it and they're gonna have Call of Duty and whatever. You know, like that's already kind of what they do with the 360. Yeah, and that's but way what more I'm saying is like they had a chance to recapture a lot of that core gamer audience, which is pretty powerful and pretty vocal. And I'm not sure they did. They did to not. To be honest, I'm not sure they did. I think the PlayStation kind of was going to ha- have that core audience you're talking about regardless. Because I kind of feel like whatever Microsoft said here, those gamers were already so locked in against it because of the 360 and because of the Kinect and the way that they managed the 360. I think those people were just waiting for anything and then they were going to go gay you know, like, I, I don't feel like they really had a chance to win over most of those people. I think they did. I think they they just didn't, they didn't do it. They, you think fun. they blew it? They blew it. They did blow it. They totally blew it. Like, after seeing this, I'm not buying one. Like, I even said, like, I needed to be impressed if I was going to buy it. And when they were kind of showing all the TV stuff, I was kind of like... Yeah, maybe, like, at some point down the road, like, I might pick one up just because, you know, maybe Alan Wake 2 will finally come out, Halo 5 <laughs> will come out, and I'll be like, well, I gotta play Halo 5, you know, so I yeah. might go get one, but then, like, after seeing all this, it's like, why even bother, you know? Is Halo 5 really worth me throwing down all that money on that on the, on a system where I'm not gonna use, like, two-thirds of its functionality? You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like that, no, that. That that is definitely a good point because I mean, you're looking like for myself, I'm like, well, I'm gonna get it because just Xbox. I've oh, I've gotten every Xbox there is. PlayStation, I got the PS2, and then we have the PS3, but that's like a family console. That's not mine. You know, I don't have it in my room. Uh, but I have all the Xboxes. I've always gotten the Xbox. I like that experience. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff on that Xbox that I'm like, it's cool, but I'm not gonna use it. I don't, I don't pay attention to fantasy sports. I don't come up with the fantasy league and, you know, like, you know, care, care about tracking players and stuff. I really don't care. So I don't do that myself. I know, I understand the importance of that to a lot of people because there are a lot of people I know who are very much involved in that, but I'm not. So yeah, you can kind of see like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. I wouldn't be like, you know, oh, we'll just plug in, you know, a Verizon through that box or whatever. No, we have the Verizon box that we pay whatever money we pay for and that's what i'm gonna end up using mm-hmm. you know so oh, so i can snap in something else so i can you know <laughs> let me watch star trek but also get tickets to star trek into darkness you know i I, <laughs> I don't ever see the need to be like well i don't want to stop watching this movie but i have to get tickets like for the, the sequel right now like, like you've the, had years to watch that movie before going yeah to that just movie's in bargain bins across the country <laughs> yeah just go like, already you don't need that functionality it just seems completely yeah. like it's cool, but it's useless. It's you know, like the stupid controller sharing with PlayStation. Yeah. It's kind of cool, and then it's kind of stupid when you really think about it. You know what uh, you could do is just go to the fucking theater and buy your tickets there. 
I always <laughs> buy my tickets. I, yeah, I always <laughs> buy my tickets at the theater. I never buy. I check show times on Fandango. I never buy them online because I never go. To, I go at the right times. I. You know, I go to because I used to work at a theater, so I know when to go. I know on certain days, you know, when there's a rush, when there isn't a rush. If it's a weekday, there might be a tad bit of a rush between like maybe seven to eight o'clock. Any other time, good to go on a weekday. On the weeknight or on, on weekends, it's got to be in the daytime. If you go at night, you're going to be dealing with a crowded theater, and you have to get there at least thirty minutes early, or you might not even get a seat depending on the theater you're going to. So I go at the right times, and I just buy my fucking tickets in person. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But there's my rant. <laughs> James from Jell, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, uh, Blu-ray, which I feel like uh, was probably that one was of the only of things they kind of like hit the nail on the head like correctly. It's like one of the only things they did correct in this. For like, they had to go Blu-ray. Like, I well, think it was that. I think personally, it was a huge mistake not to go blu-ray like near the beginning of the 360s life cycle because even near the be- like only about a year into the 360s life cycle was when we knew hd dvd was dead and they just stuck to their guns like no we're gonna stick to these dvds no. and it's like you know it's like come on man just switch it out like you switch that you put hdmi in the later consoles you know and then eventually yeah. like you know they're all gonna break anyway just fucking do it the <laughs> like, irony of hd dvd is that it had the better name but it didn't win. But yeah. it had the better name. I don't remember why it's called Blu-ray. I think it has something to do with the laser that decodes it. It's like blue or some yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, th- I thought it was something about what it does to the blue colors in the picture. No, it's um, it has to do with the laser, I'm pretty sure. Because I looked it up once. Like The, the actual laser that decodes the, the, the image on the disc is, is like blue or some shit. So... Because I, I, they're not blue discs. When you hear that, you think they're blue discs, but it, they're actually like transparent. Um, but yeah, oh, I don't. Uh, I don't. This know. Google autofill thing is bullshit. I hate it. This what? <laughs> I hate. You go on Google and it like autofills your thing for you, and like that's not what I wanted. It filled it with the wrong thing. It's like I'm Google. I know what you want. I know what you want. No, you don't, Google. You don't know what I want, don't tell so me back off and let me type what I want. You don't know me. <laughs> oh, here's here's a an article on IGN. Xbox One will not function without Connect attached. Oh my god! It just gets worse and worse. <laughs> like, oh my god, man! Wait, you can't unplug the bastards. So no, that and then it's constantly <laughs> going can't. Xbox cancel Xbox. Fuck! You can't <laughs> unplug the bastard. I bet you you can unplug, unplug the eye toy and the PlayStation. <laughs> You're like, I don't want people to see me getting freaky on my couch. I do think that these are things that are going to be um, – that like right now sound like horrible nuisances, but you're just going to be like, it's whatever. It's what it is. Like it's uh, very, I think it's very quickly, as soon as it's released, going to be, eh, whatever. Yeah, uh, for the people, For the people out there who want an answer to the Blu-ray question, it does refer to the blue laser used to read the disc. See? Okay. I got it right. So the laser is blue that reads the disc? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, so every Xbox One game has a mandatory install as well. Oh, boy. How's it feel, Xbox? Welcome to the world of PlayStation. Actually, you know, uh, in the beginning, all the PS3 games you had to install, but actually, um, only some of them do now. It depends on what game it is. Um, if it's a really big game, they have to install but like games like Uncharted and stuff don't have they don't need, you don't need to install it. Um, it depends on the developer and it depends on how they use the hardware and the architecture. Like I know that Rage um, needed like an eight gig install on the hard drive because of you know the game's graphical fidelity and uh, like I guess the processor couldn't run the. Uh, like it couldn't it couldn't render the HD like the freaking amazing graphics that game had while keeping it 60 frames per second so they had to have an install so that it was easier for the system to keep up and like still maintain the frame rate um certain games like have to do that but um like uh, DC Universe online oh god <laughs> oh god like 14 <laughs> gigs probably bigger now uh can we just i, I just 
can we just address something? Are you done? Yeah, I'm, d- I'm done. You can go ahead. Why was Ghostbusters the video game 2 not announced? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, they already screwed it up. But... I was, I mean, I mean, seriously, we've had two different, we have had three now, we have now had three next gen consoles revealed, not a single mention. I just had Ghostbusters this the video game like, 2, and I am very upset. I just had this vision of like, <laughs> Don Matrick at the end of the press conference, he's like, he's like, one of the most successful gaming franchises ever <laughs> with exclusive DLC and the entire, the entire room goes black and you just hear, <laughs> and then, and then like, just some crazy, it's just, <laughs> and they just show the game and then they end. Like they don't even go on Call of Duty. I would have been so happy. I would have been so funny. I would have been so happy I'd have been mad. Like, I'd have been so happy I would have started breaking things. Like, I would have been that happy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm just screaming. I'm just, shut up! Shut up! This is not real! Shut up! I just keep monitoring Twitter because all these articles are going up everywhere. Like, oh, man. I... Apparently, you get to keep your gamer score. So that's good. Oh, oh man. Yeah. I was about I, ready to I, I, jump uh, off a cliff. Man, I don't have right. to. The fact that this ca- that this thing is going to have like all this functionality with your cable box, but you're still going to need a cable box for it. You can't just they can't somehow figure a way to be like it's your all in one destination, but you got to plug it into the box that you already have. Like it, then it's like what's the fucking point? Plus that thing looks huge. It looks like a VCR. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's yeah, the- I looked at it, I was like, oh my god, this thing looks massive! It does look pretty big, actually. It does <laughs> look like a VCR, now that you say that. Whoa! Here's a- okay, so uh, here's an IGN article um, about the mandatory game installs. It's it's like two paragraphs. Let me show. It said, according to Wired, if owners want to use the disc with a second account, they'll be asked to pay a fee and install the game from the disc, suggesting that once games are installed, you won't need to insert the disc to play. It's unclear... What this means for the second-hand market, though, Microsoft announced on an FAQ page, also in parentheses, since removed, that the Xbox One is designed to, quote, enable customers to trade in and resell games. We'll have more details to share soon, or share later, unquote. It didn't reference the fees confirmed by Microsoft to Wired. So we don't know how much it's going to cost. Well, I guess it would be like a 10 bucks or something. Mm. Let's use the online pass, like, was like, what, 10 bucks, right? Yeah, well, uh, also... It, it, they could. Uh, this is speculation, everybody. I don't know, but uh, they could like, depending on how new the game is, fluctuate the price. So, like a new game that you're trying to install, like your, let's say your buddy, like, because if you can play the game without the discs, theoretically, you could, uh, like buy one copy of a game, install it, and then just pay like the ten dollar fee on somebody else's and get the whole game. You know? And just oh, add yeah. So I wonder I, if anyone at Microsoft thought of that. Yeah, I wonder if they did, <laughs> but you know what? This is my this is what I'm saying though. They could fluctuate the price to make it harder for them to do that. Mm. So they could say like, well, if you're trying to install like call let's say Call of Duty Ghost comes out day one and uh Let's just hypothetically, James and I buy one copy of Call of Duty Ghosts, and we have two of these Xboxes. Right. And uh, we and James installs his, and then I take the copy and put it in my Xbox, and it makes me pay. What if it makes me pay like forty dollars for that pass? Like you're not saving that much money, but if it's only ten, like that's detrimental to their business plan. Oh my so, god! I mean, that's 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 a way to game the system. They would. Yeah. Have to. So what if they can fluctuate the price depending on how new a game is? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if it's within the first. I wouldn't couple put it weeks, past them. It's a, it's like fifty bucks. Yeah. If it's within the first few months, it's like you know, it's like thirty bucks, and then if it's with yeah, with it's that, like, like three months, it's like, like ten or something. Or something. Yeah. yeah, like something like that. Like if we go when the game goes to Xbox Platinum status, it's ten bucks. <laughs> oh shit! It just gets <laughs> Xbox Classic and worse. <laughs> Uh, BRG, uh, yourmobilelife.com, or BRG.in, apparently. Uh, Microsoft admits Xbox One can't play Xbox 360 games. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, no backwards compatibility, I did hear that. Which is just ridiculous. Microsoft, we want you to have an all-in-one device, except you're going to have to hold on to that bulky old console that we know has already broken. Yeah. Like, look, I have this thing, it's five years old. Five years old, it's falling apart. This thing's barely going to make it to the next generation. 
And now, if I want to play Halo 4, Halo 4, I'm talking about Halo 4, the game <laughs> that it directly has story elements in in direct connection with 5 and 6, which are on the new one. I need to have this old broken down piece. It might run a freaking, it might run an emulator though, like, uh, in a sense that you could buy the game digitally, but I know it's stupid because you already have the game in a physical format. But I mean, they're doing the same thing with PS4 anyway. But it's because, but the reason they're doing it with PS4 is because the architecture is being fundamentally changed. So there's no way to, uh, there's no way to emulate uh, PS3 games on a PS4 without an emulator or without Gaikai. So there's just no way. And I mean, they took us. It's sad. It sucks. But it's the step in the right direction because the cell processor in the PS3 is. Terra bad, and this is coming from a Sony person. It's terror bad. It's awful, and uh, I, I don't know. It seems like they weren't really taking a huge step away from like the 360. I mean, it, they are changing some of the architecture, but you'd think that they would be able to do it. But it just seems a little odd. Like it seemed like that could have been a one up. Like. Oh, PS4 doesn't play your old games, but we do. Because, you know, people still play the older Call of Duty games. You know? Yeah. So it's yeah. like, those people can't migrate to the next system. And and people who are going to be playing Call of Duty Ghosts on the 360, because it's going to come to the 360, uh, like, are they going to be able to play with, you know, the, the Xbox One people? Probably not. Oh, like across because it's yeah. all in Xbox Live. I don't know. Yeah, probably, probably I don't know, man. Not, but... It's really, well, like, it just seems like that could have been something that they could have held up and said, yeah, like, we we can, but you, but they can't. You know, back to the old Sony and Nintendo yeah. days. Or, I mean, Nintendo uh, and Nintendo does, Sega days. But Nintendo don't. Nintendo don't. <laughs> you know, I don't even really count Nintendo as part of the... Oh my god, no. Nintendo is like a an enigma. It's its own thing. It's kind of it is it is really its own thing. But I, I also feel that Microsoft right now is becoming its own thing. It's becoming the next Nintendo. And I know people don't want to hear that, but I I feel that in my gut. Like oh, yeah, judging by this conference, that's totally true. Though. Yeah, like, it's not a game well, console anymore. Yeah, well, well, I mean, definitely, I definitely think that they're, I mean, but, but they've been pushing towards entertainment for a long time, so that's not surprising. What does surprise me is all this very vastly negative news that seems to be popping out right after about, you know, pre-owned fees, which to me is not that big of a deal for me specifically because I don't buy pre-owned games. I buy them new or I don't buy them. That's basically it for me. I have bought maybe one or two like in my life. It's very uncommon that I buy a pre-owned game. And I don't sell games back because I basically am like, I, you know, never know when I'll have the itch to play that game, so I'm going to hold on to it. So that's not really an issue for me. But, you know, th- these other things that we're talking about, um, what were the other uh, rumors? The, the Connect always being online was like, Ugh. And then um, what was the other thing you just brought up? I, I already forgot it. <laughs> Um, what was the other bad thing that you just brought up? Backwards compatibility? No, uh, Not earlier. The one what, before the Connect. Something one. before backwards compatibility, but after Connect. The uh, installing games or whatever? Uh, there was something else. There was something else in there that bothered me, and that one was kind of like, oh, that does sound kind of ugly. So, like, it, it's like, I'm past, uh, you're, you're getting to the threshold of, like, oh, come on, dude, seriously? Yeah, I'm already on that. Like, I, I'm, I'm, not buying this machine. Like, but yeah, but you weren't an Xbox guy, though. That's the thing. You weren't. I, you an know Xbox what's funny guy. is I, I totally guy. was when the well, you were first launched, and then I slowly shifted gears because I saw that like I was getting less exclusives, and I'm the kind of person who buys like a new game every month, you know. And I'm like, there's not really, I'm like, there's nothing like, really interesting to play, and I haven't played all these PlayStation exclusives, and I was a big PS1 person and PS2 person back in the day. The reason I didn't get a PS3 is because it was so damn expensive. But by the time I got into it, uh, Slim had come out. And it changed my mind because it was cheaper. And, like, my friends all had it and were kind of going over to it and saying how much they loved it. And uh, I was like, maybe it's time to go back to PlayStation. So I started doing that. Of course, I played Uncharted 1, like, for the first time, which is my favorite game of all time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like, that blew my mind. I started playing Killzone 2 for the first time, which I freaking adore. I adore that game. And then I, I just, like, at that point, I made this the choice, like, a month later after I'd been playing my PlayStation. I was like, the Xbox doesn't interest me anymore, and I have barely played it ever since. Like, the last game I really sat down and played on Xbox before I got rid of it was Halo 4. 
And as soon as I beat it, I sold the Xbox because I was like, I don't really, there's no reason to go back now. Like I, I don't, I don't ever play this thing. It just sits in my room, collects dust. And I even said like this for the next Xbox, like the Xbox One, they're really gonna have to like show me something that's gonna make me go like, holy shit, I gotta buy this because if it's all this TV stuff. Like, I'm not interested, and that's what it was. It was all this TV stuff. And and the more news that just comes out about it, I'm just way less excited. And uh, I just don't I just don't care. Dude, I am so happy because I compared the Xbox to a VCR, saying it looks like a VCR. And now and it's trending. VCR <laughs> is trending on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, so many tweets. People on NeoGAF are fucking, like, ripping it. I mean, NeoGAF are people, like, awful people anyway, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're awful people anyway. This guy said... They were, like, rate the Xbox conference, and this guy says Xbox 1 out of 10. <laughs> oh. Ooh, I, got burned. And then I, this I, guy I, even I, says, up. worse than Sony's infamous E3 2006 showing. Ooh. <laughs> That's bad. Like... Well, um... That's actually a good way to end the, the podcast because I think we're getting close to the yeah. to that time. Um, why don't we all rate what we thought of the the conference? I wouldn't be as bad to say one as funny as it is, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna say somewhere around three to four. It's pretty bad. Like I feel like they didn't like try to ke- they didn't even like attempt. To keep the core gamer like in their uh, thing, they basically said, basically with this press conference, they said it's not a game machine anymore. It's a machine that does everything that your that all the boxes in your living room do, but it happens to play games, and it's got the Xbox brand behind it. I really, really wouldn't be surprised if this truly is the last Xbox. And there are lots of people in, like, former Microsoft employees who think that this is the last time they'll ever make an Xbox. And I think that once, if there is a generation after this coming one, if there's a PlayStation 5, there won't be an Xbox that generation. And that's my take on it. I think that this is it. Like, they've reached the end of the road because... By the time another generation rolls around and the graphics are going to be getting better, I don't think really anyone's going to be playing games on their Xbox. And if they are, it's just going to be like Call of Duty and all that. And I mean, by then, you know, what what kind of crazy technology will they have invented? Like, what will be the next thing? We really have no idea, but I really do think this is the last Xbox. Like, this is it. Okay. It's all um, downhill from here. Like... <laughs> Uh, Alan, what are you ranking it? Um, but two point five. Two point five. Okay. He really did. Well, yeah, he did say he didn't. Like it. <laughs> he did say he didn't like. I just it. launched into a tirade, and he rated it even lower. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, Nate, what about you? Um, I'd say four or five. Like what the the angle I'm coming from is. Like, I look at these systems as a gamer. And as a gamer, like, if I'm comparing both the PS4 and the Xbox One, like, there's really, there's no comparison. Like, yeah, it's kind of cool that you can do all these cool TV features and connect and whatever. Um, but, yeah, I I wasn't terribly impressed. Um, I feel like they skirted over a lot of things that they really should have focused more on. There's also that nagging feeling that a lot of the stuff we're probably going to pay extra for, which I've never been right. a huge fan of. Uh, like, I'll be honest, like, I'm, I try to be thrifty when it comes to gaming, so if, if there's, you know, one system I have to pay to, to you know, do all this extra crap on another system I don't, then I'm obviously going to pick the one I don't. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's cool. I'm sure it'll sell a lot. I'm sure it'll have its, its fans and its crowd. All the sports things and everything. I actually thought I should probably recommend it to my brother because my brother, like, my brother's not really a big gamer, but he is, like, a huge, like, you know, basketball, you know, sports fan. And I feel like he'd love the hell out of, out of Xbox One. Oh, he probably Does would. he love the fantasy stuff? Like I mean, not, not so much the fantasy stuff, but he's definitely a big sports follower. 
and he, I mean, what little games he does play are like, you know, mostly Xbox, you know, Halo and Call of Duty and all that stuff. So I feel like the Xbox One would be like perfect for him. Uh, but for me in particular, yeah, like, whatever. It's cool, but not, yeah. Like, I, I, I mentioned in Twitter, like, you know, they'd really, they were going to have to try really hard to, to win me over after the PS4 conference, and they just didn't. Yep. Well, um, I'm guessing that's. I would. I'm gonna go a little bit higher than you guys, but not much. Uh, I'll go with six. The reason I'm going okay. for the six is because, first of all, I am giving them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because we knew this wasn't about games. We knew that E3 is going to be about games. This is about the console, and they're showing you functionality that they have, which I thought they did do a good job of showing good functionality. Uh, that being said, um, they they didn't elaborate on a lot of things. And because they didn't elaborate on a lot of things, like how the whole cable thing works and everything, it basically just led to a post show of, oh, we'll check out, but look at this, but this sucks and this sucks and this sucks and this sucks. And like they never really went, you, and the reason they didn't go into it is because if they went into it, you'd see how much it kind of sucks. So I, I think <laughs> that there is some good stuff there. Um, not necessarily all stuff I'm going to want, especially as a gamer, not necessarily, but I am still giving them the benefit of the doubt, seeing that we're going to be getting an E3, which hopefully, now that they've gotten that out of the way, hopefully E3 will basically just be games, and that would be pretty awesome. Mm. So that's I'm giving, but I'm still not giving like a high rating because you know, and and, and for me, you think we all a six out of 10 is the lowest I think I've ever... No, no, it's like the second lowest I've ever rated a game. So I'm not one to throw out very low scores. If I didn't like it, it's usually in the 5 to 6 range. I think I gave Connect Star Wars a 5 flat. Um, but yeah. Cool. So not great, but whatever. Yeah. Well, I guess that's it for our show. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. Come to VGU TV. Um, we'll probably in the coming days probably have a lot of articles about a lot of uh, reaction pieces about this console, and of course you can find us on Twitter at VGUTV. And I think that is it. Yeah. Alrighty. Peace, guys. Later.